Hello everybody and welcome back to Tony Northeastern. Um, now that we've finished one phase of the build, now it's time to start the second phase of the build which is just here. Well, it's not here, here, but it's here. It's here in the way of photographs. Now is to start on platform 2. Now I have some lovely photographs here which George Tullin kindly sent me a while back. Um, as you can see it's in a derelict state but it gives you a little inkling of what went on on platform 2. As you can see to the left here you can see with this shape here looks like the outline of the footbridge and then we have here a looks like a loading bay door which probably went out through to outside and then alongside it here we have which looks to appear appears to be a doorway maybe to an office that was partially bricked up but it goes right down to the platform edge which confirms it in the next photograph as you can see it's here this must be the edge of the platform running along as you can see there's a couple of really big windows um, before it reaches uh, this window and I've still got a few of those windows left from when I built the main building. Alright now this photograph if we zoom in here gives you an outline of what's going on beyond those arches and the only tie-in from the outer wall and the inner wall is this here but it looks fairly modern but then again the whole structure the way it's built looks fairly modern but it was built in the 18 hundreds and so. So if we turn this photograph this way up this gives you a better detail of all the arches running along the platform edge here. I can just get my finger in position and it shows there the actual door or it may have been a window now looking at it is blocked off or bricked up you got all these arches and you can see the beam running back towards that building there the outside wall as the platform curves around right. yet again this with this photograph just shows you more of these large windows so there must have been more of them all the way along here just letting light in because you can imagine that roof following it down to that brick edge now this photograph you know I've, I've used quite a lot over the uh, building of this station all right and my final photo because there's not many photographs of platform 2 shows um, another another door but not quite a loading bay door it's just a, a small door which I've made some of them ready but a loading door next to it but in between there and there there must have been more windows must have been but they've all been bricked up but it's quite hard to tell with this photograph now those columns have, would have gone right along to the edge here and that would have been a tapered wall going back I'm sure of it. Just gives you a brief glimpse of what's going on on the outer walls. So I'll just zoom that in a little bit more. Now 
as you can see I can recognize that pattern because we have that pattern of brickwork already on platform one I just turn the camera around you can see it there where you have reinforced brickwork in between windows and if you look quite closely there's a looks like a skylight there which is letting in light into the office but this looks like it's been rebuilt quite recently so as for the rest of it um, I just can't see what's going on beyond and the very last photograph I want to show you, which confirms what I was saying about the slope going down, which meets the edge of the main roof. And as you can see, we have a lovely fascia there. And that I've got to try and include when I come to do in the main canopy. So as you can see from this brickwork design on platform one, this is what I hope to replicate for platform two, even including the blue bricks for the outer walls, because there's no evidence of seeing this on the inner walls. We have all the dimensions I need here and here. So it'll be quite easy to transfer the heights and everything across. So although there will be sketches, they won't be as detailed as they were for the main building. So Let's make a start. First thing I'm going to do is start at the entrance of the station. Um, I've got to um, mark a line from the edge of there to the edge and create an edge over here for the columns. And it's got to be straight as you look at it as if you were coming into the station. Um, which is not going to be easy because there's lots of curves. There's curves going this way and and that way. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to mark it here, and remove the rule, and just to see what it looks like. So I could create a pillar, sit in there, and have a little bit of a run back, and then come across with a wall. Yep, that sounds like a plan. Right, so that's this end. And the same goes for this side of the station as well, so I've put the rule up against that and it looks square to the tracks, that's all I can do it by. And I'll just put a little tiny mark here for the column to start there. And, and hopefully that should be the same length um, as this uh, station building here, so we'll, we'll check that. And uh, I feel sorry for this matey down here. He, he's waiting for his signal box. You know, he's shaking his head. Where's my bloody signal box? All in good time. <laughs> and the measurements of the length of that station building on that side, which is just over 1100 millimeters, that's including the walls here, from this point to that point down there. And here we have, from this point here, from this mark, to the mark all the way along to here, is 50 mil shorter. It's probably where the camber of the bend is getting narrow towards us. So I shall leave it at that. It doesn't affect how I'm going to build it. Right, I have a couple of sketches here, they're a bit rough and ready, um, I don't think there's no need to 
do a very detailed sketch for the end wall. Um, as long as I've got the basic measurements and the shapes. However, I have made a purpose detail drawing for the actual um, pillars, uh, like you saw in the photographs. Um, because I'm going to have to keep referring back to something and here it is here so it gives me the the actual overall height of the pillars the, the space beneath the pillars and the shape of the actual uh, concrete um, plinths that go across the pillars I shall now offer this up to the platform to make sure that the measurements I've got are correct. Right, so now we have our first card template in place. Um, this wall here, I'm not 100% certain, but I need to check it out, but I think there may have been a window here. That's something else I've got to look into before I start um, putting some brick paper onto this wall. Um, this is turning out to be a little bit more of a headache because the structure on this side of the station is not complete. Um, the arches or the pillars seem to finish about here at this point. And because the footbridge here is not as long as the original the pillars have got to stop short just about here so I'm trying to work out the spacings for the pillars at the moment because I need to do the inside first and then work out over if that makes sense because I can't change the position of this footbridge. That is it, it's set in stone now. And everything seems to evolve around this footbridge. Um, in the photographs, the pillars come on this side of the footbridge. Um, and then there's a, a long arch that comes across and then back down again. But uh, I want to keep the space that I've got here exactly the same as the space I've got there so it makes the the overall roof comes up across here and back down again and a little bit easier to make because it'll all be uniformed um, in sizes wise so that's what I'm going to do next I'm going to work out the spacings I need for the pillars there's about six pillars that finish about here so in my estimation there's got to be another at least one or maybe two before it reaches the end of the wall here. So with lots of calculating and deliberation I've worked out that, that there's eight pillars between the footbridge and the brick wall back here. And the reason why I'm thinking that because just here just here there's some um, patches in the um, platform there where they've probably concreted over the um, bases so I'm going to stick with that eight columns which supports the roof as you can see we have them missing in this photograph so now that I'm happy with my centers I'm going to start building the top rail that we have here. So I've got my three pieces of card already pre-cut and I'm just going to glue these together using the good old PVA wood glue. So as you can see I've glued the card together and I have left a little notch there so we can connect up the card because this only goes as far as the footbridge obviously this will continue past the footbridge and meet up with the other wall 
So that's that bit done. So now I'm going to concentrate on some pillars. Right, now that I've started on the pillars, there's just one thing I need to note that this pillar here is slightly wider than all these pillars here because if you look beyond it there's something tied into the back of the pillar looks like another lintel uh, with some bricks supporting it now to confirm that um, right so to confirm that there it is in a different photograph and as you can see it is slightly wider so I've got to make two pillars uh, maybe just just a half a foot or a foot bigger than all the other pillars one for this side and I'm presuming there's another one um, further back beyond the photograph you can't quite see it but beyond the uh, DMU there. All my columns lined up ready for gluing and I've stuck a couple together already. Um, I haven't done the outer cards yet because I might have to trim these down because at the moment these stand at uh, three and a half foot by one and a half foot but by the time I put the outer cards on um, it's going to work out roughly about two foot thick so it's not quite true to scale I think I'm about two or three mil over um, but I'd rather have these a little bit wider just to take the weight of the main truss that the main roof is going to sit on that's how it's going to go. It's going to go underneath there like that. Right, so that's the columns glued together. So the next thing I want to do now is see here where the columns are going to go. There's the center lines. So I'm just going to create that half semicircle like you see in the photographs here and here and then cut that out just to give the beam that extra height. So what I'm doing there, I'm just going to take it from the corner of that red mark, push down straight, and then pull the blade towards me. And then just use that again in the same position and just cut it at 45. And then a little bit more again, right on the tip to give it the radius. Now for doing things like this you've got to use a really sharp blade. I've just changed the blade for, for doing this. And as you can see you get a nice radius in there. I don't know if you can see that. Right away through. So I'm just coming to the last piece to notch out like I've done here. So I'm lining it up with my pencil mark and make sure the rule is flush with the lines and then as this is a very very sharp scalpel I can go straight down and then bring it across a little bit at a time just making sure I'm staying on the line So I'm through on one side, just got to turn it around to do the last bit. It's just so I don't cut into the semicircles. And there you go. All my notches have been notched. <laughs> So as you can see I've now added super glue just on the radiuses only, not on this face because um, 
the ordinary card glue needs to stick to this face with just the radius. So it's only so I can round them off a bit more and clean them up. And uh, just a word of warning, it's very absorbent. Uh, There's the super glue, it just sort of seeps straight into the card, and that's what I like about it. So the super glue's gone off now, so I've just started to sand the card up. Now you're thinking to yourself, sanding card? Tell you what, this has gone rock hard, it's like sanding um, hardwood. And it just seems to... It doesn't fray like it would do if, you were, if this was just ordinary card. Without super glue on it, it'll just fray and go dusty and... But you get such a nice smooth finish on that radius. And I've hardly taken any of anything off. what happens there there's no super glue in that bit and the, and the card is fraying so what I'll do is I'll put a bit of super glue on that wait it goes off and I'll be able to finish off sanding it right so now that the support beams uh, done we can now concentrate on the columns and these are the blocks we had put together earlier. I've trimmed them down even further. I've taken them down to 13 mil wide. They were originally 15 mil wide, so I've trimmed another two millimeters off of these. And these are the strips of card that we're going to glue to the side to form a dovetail joint, which will support the beam. And here's one I've done earlier. So basically, the beam will drop into there and then we'll just glue that in place and that will give it the correct height that is 52 millimeters in there and that is 76 from the top to the bottom so now we can cut next step is to wrap the brick card around the pillar so what I'm doing is I'm just putting it right on the edge of the card and I'm just marking it now you've probably noticed I've got a height line there now that height line is for that line there so I know where to cut it out after I've folded the card all the way around as you will see as we continue so I get the rule to the line, maybe just a fraction past the line, because the card does stretch. And I just fold it over. Also what I tend to do is, is I tend to mark, for when I come to glue it, the face, the face that you folded first. So that each fold will match. Then you mark it again, and you continue it to all the way around. Make sure you get a really nice tight crease. Making sure that you see no gaps when you come to put the card up on, you come to glue it. Strips there. And once you cut them out, 
you will end up with something like this. Okay, as you can see, I have uh, finished the columns now. Um, what I've done is to tie the two buildings in. I've copied what's on platform one, where you've got the blue band of bricks going around the whole station building. Now, I know it's not in the photograph, but it helps to tie them in so they don't look too different from each other, the two sides. Um, yeah, that's, that's the only reason why I've done that. So what I'm doing now is I've mixed up a little solution here for getting rid of white on the cards. Now I've used a PVA solution, 50-50, and then I've added the paints. Now I'm using acrylic paints, seeing basic acrylic paints, you can buy these anywhere. And it's just a tiny dab of red and a tiny smidgen of black. And, um, and it works. I think the glue in here helps seal the card as well. Um, so I just run that along there. And if you wipe that off, and then when it dries, you hardly notice that it's been painted. I mean, I've got to go around there with the weathering yet. But uh, the likes of these corners here, I just dab it along the edges where the, the brick card seems to have... Uh, and just wipe it off. Look at that. It just looks like it's blended in. You can never tell. And um, here's one I've done earlier. So as you can see I'm beginning to stick the pillars to the main roof support and uh, so far so good they seem to be um, parallel to each other and square to the frame uh, which is good so it's just a case of putting PVA glue on there, there, all the way around there and the same in there as well and then they just slide on there like that some card in between the pillars um, just like what it is in the photographs so that's uh, just over 54 um, only as far as the concrete line there because that's going to be painted that bit of card there so I've left these overnight to harden off and um, I've tried it on the platform and each and every one of the pillars is actually touching the platform. Uh, the only downside here is I've got most of the joints facing on the inside. I wanted them all to be on the back but um, hey ho I'm not going to change it now because um, it's, it's done, it's done, it's done. Right so with that in mind, the, the next thing to do is to infill these side, this side with card to bring it flush with the brick card on this side. I've now brought it up level with the pillars, so I filled in between the pillars using the Medcalf card and a millimeter thick card just to bring a level. So on this side, I have made a start in painting the white bits of card so I've done that one using the same mixture I used earlier on for hiding the white edges so that's the next thing so I'll do all this before um, I paint the concrete um, doesn't matter if it gets everywhere at the minute because I will be painting the concrete beams that's in there And then a Q-tip just to wipe it off the card only. Right, we should crack on. Right, so now we move on to doing the concrete. Um, I'm using a matte 240. It's a humble paint. 
Um, concrete, uh, as you know, is not an easy colour to replicate. But I think that's about as close as I'm going to get. Right, so now we have one half of the columns done. I uh, thought I'd make a start on the end wall. Now, there's our little drawing that we started with at the beginning of the video. And what I've done now is I've added the thickness of the main support beam. And what I've got to do now is tie in the main strut that's on the columns. So what this now represents, with that piece of card on there, will rep represent a column if you like. And then from that I've got to add two more 10mm thicknesses to get the shape that we have here. I have placed the end wall um, on the layout to give you an idea of what it may look like and also to give me an idea what it looks like um, as for this side I haven't got a clue how it's decorative wise in the brickwork so if I take that basic design here transfer it onto here once I get the windows because uh, I haven't got them yet I've ordered them but I'm going to cheat a little bit because I found some windows that look similar to the ones in the photographs and um, as we come around gives you a better idea of what it's looking like in the station now, the pillars not weathered yet I'm going to do them all together because um, as you know there's more pillows to come past the footbridge so let's have another look from the other side. So as you can see I've stood the pillars up that uh, are not connected to the other structure yet. That's just to give me an idea of what's going on. And uh, there should have been a lot more pillars but as I have done a narrowing of the platform here there's going to be less pillars because this, this should have been a, a, at least another two or three more. But um, that's just down to space. Yeah, I think that's taken shape nicely. So I think that's all from me this week. I um, hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. And uh, I'll catch up with you next week. Uh, you've had a, a bonus video this week, haven't you? Uh, it's back to normal next week, I'm afraid. Right, I'll see you then then. Bye for now. Bye.